Hi, okay, today we're going to be working more on learning about binary and other number bases. Problems. All right, so before we start talking about binary, let's talk about why binary. So first of all, we need to understand what a computer is. So I want to take this down to a real basic level, okay? So I want you to imagine that we have a device here that can read input, okay? So this is input and it can be read and we can get the output. And such a thing that takes in input and has an output is often called a gate. All right? So we can put different amount of voltage and power to this. A computer is an electrical device, so I could give it maybe 5 volts of electricity. Um, we can even do like a negative voltage if we're using alternating current or zero voltage or seven volts and out this gate will read what it is okay now a simple device that we could use for this would to be what's called an led a light emitting diode and the reading would be done by us and we could see how bright the light is if the bright is light we would say the output was high if it was dim we would say it was low okay and we could actually take all this voltage that's coming in this gate and we could maybe map it. And we could see that over time, different things happen. And sometimes the voltage was high. Sometimes it was low. Sometimes it was a little bit higher. Other times a little bit lower. And then maybe higher like that. Okay? Well, from this idea, we can actually make lots of different states for our output to be. We could describe our output as being, uh, we can make several states like really high, really low, uh, medium low, medium high, things like that. But that becomes really difficult for us to measure. You know, we, we want a margin of error. So what computer engineers did was they set some voltage that they said, okay, Whenever the, the electrical signals voltage, which is, voltage is simply the push on the electrons, okay? Um, whenever, I believe it's usually 5 volts, is the cutoff. So if the signal is above 5 volts, we call this high. If it is below, we'll call that low. And ideally, when we send signals to our gate, we want to try and make it not on the edge. We want to make it really clear. So by having two states, high or low, determined based on whether or not, you know, where exactly you are. Maybe it's more like three volts. I'm not sure. But we can see that we have this as high voltage over here, and this is low. And we can describe this output as being either true or false. So is the voltage high? We would say it's either true or it is false. And those two states are the foundation for how your computer stores and reads information, either true or false. All right, so there are a few basic operations that we can use with true or false. We can use the operation and, or, or not. And all other more complicated operations are simply combinations of those. So the and operation will evaluate to true if you, if true and true. So if we have two if we have two gates coming in, two signals, and they meet at what's called an AND gate, which looks like this, then the output will be true only if both of these are true. Both 
inputs have to be high voltage. The OR gate, which is usually drawn like this, will output true as long as either one of these is true or both of them. So they could be true, and both inputs could be true, one true, one false, or uh, this one can be false and this one can be true. But if they're both false, it would be false. And then lastly, we have what's called a not. And a not just takes one input and reverses it. So if the input is true, the output is false. And those are the things we've already seen in coding. We already know that in Java, the or operator is that symbol. The and operator is this symbol. And the not operator is that symbol. So since we have two states, true or false, we can describe them as true or false, but we can also assign number values to them. So we're going to say that true is the number 1 and false is the number 0. Now, Java does not actually maintain this. It doesn't allow you to, it doesn't actually assign a number value to true. Other uh, programming languages do. For example, in Python, false has the numeric value 0, and any other number value is considered true. Now that we've assigned number values to these things, we can actually start doing some more complicated work. But we have to use just these two digits in order to formulate bigger and bigger quantities. So let's say that I have eight of these little um, uh, storage items, which we call them bits. A bit is short for the word binary digit. It's a compound of those. Okay, and so if I have eight of them, eight memory storage devices that can be either high or low, one or zero, then what we have here is an 8-bit system. This is 8-bit, and we can call this an 8-bit number, okay? Okay. Because we have eight binary digits. Let's see if we can figure out what this, how do we could count with this. If all of these corresponding bits, these memory items in our computer, are off, then this translates to the number zero. Java is what we call big, uh, big Indian, meaning that like the the big number is over here on the left. So this is the most significant digit. So it, it works just like regular numbers that our ones digit is all the way to the right. So then if I switch on just this one bit right here, this can be representing the number one. Now, if I want to represent the number two, I need to open up another bit. One bit can only store the numbers zero and one. So I need to make this bit on, and I'll turn this bit back off. And that's the number two. After that, I can turn this bit back on and get the number three. But to get the number four, I have to add, I have to open up yet another bit. Now I have the number four. And I'll stop writing all those zeros, but I can represent the number 5 like this, the number 6 like this, and then the number 7. After the number 7, though, I need to open up another bit. And that gives me the number 8. And then this process will continue. I'll start again over here on the right with a 1, and it'll, and it'll slowly fill up all the way until I get to 1, 1, 1, 1 with a bunch of zeros. And that number is the number 15. And then, again, I will open up another bit to get the 16. And it turns out these are just like place numbers. This bit here is the 1's bit 
This is the twos bit, the fours bit, eight, 16, 32nd, 64, and the 128. So what's the biggest number that we can actually compute with eight bits? Well, if all of these bits were on, we would have to add 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, and that is 255. Now, there was a game called Pac-Man. Pac-Man was an exciting game when it came out. I know you know about Pac-Man. One of the greatest badges of honor in Pac-Man was to reach level 256 if you were that good. Pac-Man could only score 8-bit numbers. Therefore, if you reached level 255, 256, then what happened was they ran out of numbers and this overflowed. And you got this weird, messed up screen. Later versions of Pac-Man that were fixed that problem still released level 256 just for fun. And they'd have like, ha credits would be like taking over half the screen. This whole game just broke because it couldn't go over that number. Kind of cool, huh? So that's how your computer stores information. It stores information with electrical signals being high or low. If you have eight of those electrical signals that you store using um, you know, different devices, uh, you can count up to 255. Uh, notice, though, the smallest number we can store is only zero. If we wanted negative numbers, we'd have to do something different. And we'll look at that. All right, so before we go any further with this, uh, I want to practice adding and subtracting with binary numbers. So let's do that. Let's add these two numbers together. How would I do that? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. But we don't have a 2. Do you remember what 2 was? 2 was 1, 0. And 3 was 1, 1. So 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. Then 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So the result of this addition is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Adding in binary numbers is really, really easy. So yeah, adding binary numbers is easy. Uh, if you're curious about what that number is in base 10 in decimal, we'd have to figure that, we could figure that out. Uh, this is the ones digit, the twos digit, the fours digit, the eights digit, the 16. So this is 16, no eights, one four and one two, making this the number 22. The numbers that we added originally, this is the 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, was 9. This is 9 in base 10. And this is 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 1 is 11. Um, well, that's just 20. Did I mess that up? 8, 0, the 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s. 8 plus 4 is 12. Plus 1 is, oh, 13. And 9 plus 13 is 22. So adding in binary is really easy. Let's do another one. Let's add these two together. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, which is 1, 0. But then we get 1 plus 1 plus 1. This is the largest we can, result we can have when adding 3. 1, 1, 1 is 1, 1. So I carry 1, and I have 1. 1 zero plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 
and 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So our result is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. All right, you try. So let's, let's, let's make up 1, and, and you try and add them. So add those two binary numbers together. Okay, so if we add them together, we should get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 1, 0 for the end. So as you can see, adding binary numbers is really simple. And all of our other devices are also really easy. We need to be able to subtract by borrowing. Uh, we can we can multiply with the standard multiplication algorithm. Math is really easy in binary because you only have ones and zeros in your standard carrying operations that you're used to. We know how to convert out of binary. If I have one zero one one, and I want to know what that is in base ten, then I simply take these powers. This is the the one there are one two three four digits so this first bit is the two to the third power it's the eighth bit then i have plus zero times two to the second power plus one times two to the first this is the twos plus one times two to the zero the powers of two <coughs> as we move from left to right decrease three two one zero so this is simply one eight zero fours one two and one one because two to anything to the zero power is one so that's eight plus two plus one that number must be eleven that's super but how do we convert a base ten number to base two yes question it is not uh, the question is, is this related to Pascal's triangle? Uh, it is not related to Pascal's triangle at this moment. However, um, there there is some connections, um, but not in this lesson. But yeah. But these are just using your, your powers. So, you know, if I give you a big, long number, now this would be a pain in, like, like if we had a 32-bit number, we could certainly convert it you know, 32 of these, you could do that, but you would, it would be difficult because you'd have to go through, let's see here, how many digits are right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I have 1, 2 to the 22nd, plus 1, 2 to the 21st, no 2 to the 20th, but I have 1, 2 to the 19th, plus 1, 2 to the 18th, plus no 2 to the 17th, plus 1, 2 to the 16th, no 15th, but I have 14th, 13th, and 12. So plus 2 to the 14, plus 2 to the 13, plus 2 to the 12, um, etc. And keep going. Now, this is a pain for us, right, to convert that. But keep in mind, taking two of these big numbers and adding them, it'd still be really easy for us, right? The only difference between a binary number and a base 10 number is that you're just maybe not used to it. So you don't immediately recognize or have a feeling for that quantity. But if I wrote this number and told you this was base 10, do you really understand what that number is? I, you would just say it's a big number. This is simply a big number. And yes, in binary, it takes a lot of digits to say something like 11, a lot more than you do in base 10. But once you get out to really, really, really big numbers, there's not that big a difference between the number of binary digits it takes, the number of bits versus the number of uh, decimal digits. So I, I argue binary is still a very effective way to do this. And while this process of converting it to a base 10 number seems tedious to us, to a machine, this is a piece of cake. This is a piece of cake. So let's take a look at, a little bit closer look at that. And there's a, if, you, if you're using a PC, 
the Windows operating system has a calculator, and usually we use it on scientific, but if you set it to programmer, it's really pretty neat. Um, it has uh, your ability to type in numbers, and it will convert it to binary, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal. Uh, we can also set it to a bit toggler mode, and you can control how many bits that you want it to be. So here's a byte. A byte stands for 8 bits, and I can type in, and I can toggle these things. So there's 0, 1, and I can make that 1, 0 is 2, 1, 1. And I'm just playing around with these numbers down here. But when you do that, if you, if you turn all of these on, you're going to notice something kind of interesting is that this is negative 1. And in fact, this only goes up to 127. Because when you are using, if we want to have positive and negative numbers, we have to use what's called the twos complement system. Okay, so uh, we're going to learn about the twos complement system by doing a little bit of algebra together. So I'm going to set up a, an algebra equation x plus 7 is equal to 12. Let's try and solve this algebra equation written in base 10. So what we typically do is that we are going to have to cancel this plus 7. And I'm going to write it like this, plus negative 7. So imagine that we don't really have, we don't really have um, subtraction. Let's just say plus a negative, okay? So these now cancel because they add to zero. This becomes x plus zero, and then this becomes five. And so we now know that the solution is x equals five. Pretty simple, right? All right, let's do this step in binary, okay? We're going to do the same thing, but in binary. So I need 7 in binary. And I'm going to write it out in 8 bits, okay? So in 8 bits, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, where this is the 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16th, 32nd, 64, and 128 bit. Uh, to make the number 7, I need a 4, a 2, and a 1. So I'll need a 1, 1, and 1, and everything else is 0. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, and then 3 ones. So if you're using a byte, and we can actually use bytes in Java instead of int. Int is 32 bits, but if you're using a byte, those zeros are important. They are set. They are there. They, they are set to off, low voltage, and the ones are three voltages that are high. And we said that this was going to equal a 12. Well, a 12 is an 8 and a 4. So that's a 1 and a 1, and everything else is a 0. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, 1, 8, 1, 4, and then a couple of zeros there. Now, I'm going to add some number here to both sides and get a result. And the result means that I need to have x is equal to 0, okay? Well, let's talk about what that would have to be. In order for this to be a 0, what number needs to go in each one of these places to make sure that I get zero. All right, a one and a one adds to what? What does one plus one add to? Two, but in binary, let me just write this down here. Zero, 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 one, one, one. And you're saying that we that bit needs to be a one because one plus one is what? One, zero, good. Now, what's 1 plus 1? 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, right? So I don't need a 0 here because I need that to be another 1, 0. I need to get zeros in each one of these. Now, what's 1 plus 1? 
one zero. So I need another zero here. And then I carry the one. Now I have a one here, a zero. I need to make sure that this is a zero. If I put a zero here, I get a one. That's not what I want. We're trying to get zero. All zeros is zero. So instead, this bit needs to be a one. So that I get one plus one is one zero. Then one plus zero plus one is one zero. So again, we need another one here. One plus zero plus one is one zero. So I need another one. One plus zero plus one would be one zero. Last one, one plus zero, I need another one. That's one zero. But where does this one go to? Well, just like in Pac-Man, then when you reach level 256 in an 8-bit number system, once you carry out that last bit, there's nowhere this can go. We call this an overflow. So for our purposes here, we're just going to throw it away. So apparently, in our number system, we are able to add these two numbers together, and this results in all zeros, 8 bits of zero. So this must somehow be, if this number here was 7, this must be negative 7. Let's go ahead and add it to the other side, because we know in algebra what we do to one side, we have to do the other, right? So that was five ones, two zeros, and a 1. You all know how to add binary now. This is not going to be challenging for you. You can do this. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is... 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0, 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, but I've already used up all my 8 bits. So what did we get as a result? We got this number. What is that number? Well, that number is 1, 4, no 2s, and 1, 1. That's 5. So x is 5. So as you can see, if you're, if you're restricted to a set number of bits, the leading digit being a 1 makes the number negative. So how would you find this number? If you're given a binary number in 8 bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, what number is that? That is an 8 plus a 4 is 12. That's 13. To find the negative of this number, flip all the bits. Flip all the bits. That's called the complement and then add 1. So this number and this number are, are opposites. They are negatives. Flip all the bits and add 1. This number here is 13. This number here is negative 13. If I add these two numbers together, they will result in a 0 because they are opposite numbers. Oh, I forgot that we added 1. So you can see we had to add that 1 there. 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. 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 And I throw away the extra bit. All right. Now that we know that, the last thing we need to discuss is how do I take a decimal number and convert it to a binary number? So let's do that. We're going to take the number 122 in base 10, and we're going to convert it to some other number in base 2. This process is really simple. You simply take the number, and we divide it repeatedly by 2, and we use the remainders. And what I do is I draw the division sign upside down, and I put a 2 here. So how many times does 2 go in the 122? If you're not sure, you can do some scratch work over here. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. Uh, zero and then two. It, it goes into it 61 times, but 
specifically, what's the remainder? Well, there is a one. There's no remainder, right? Okay. Now we're going to divide this number by 2. We're going to keep doing this until we get 0 as a result. 61 divided by 2 is 30. But there's a remainder, isn't there? What's the remainder? No. 1 half is the fraction. The remainder is just 1. So if I do 61 divided by 2, I get 2 goes into 6 three times. 0, bring down the 1. 2 goes in the 1 zero times. Now, as a mixed number, we say that's the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. But this is the remainder. This is the quotient. This is the divisor. This is the remainder, 1. All right, now let's divide 30 by 2. 2 goes into 30 15 times with the remainder of 0. Now we'll divide 15 by 2 again, and we get 7 with a remainder of 1. Let's divide seven by let's divide seven by two. I get three with the remainder of one. Divide three by two. I get one with the remainder of one. Divide one by two, I get zero with the remainder of one. This number is binary. Written from bottom to top. That's one twenty two in binary. One, 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 zero, one, zero. If I want to make it 8-bit, I need a leading zero. This number is 122 in an 8-bit number, written using a byte. So you simply repeatedly divide by 2 and write the remainders from the bottom up. If you want to find negative 122 in binary, find positive 122 and then flip all the bits. And add 1. So it's one zero 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 one one zero. This number must be negative one twenty two. So anytime you want to find a express a po a negative number in binary, find the binary for its positive number and then flip all the bits and add one. All right, that is my story about binary numbers. We're just going to practice for a couple of times. I want you to convert a number to binary. Um, let's start with the number um, 84 in base 10. I want you to find out what is that as an 8-bit or as a byte in what we call 2's complement. 2's complement, binary. Next, I want you to find the number negative 30 in base 10. What is that in binary? To do that, find 30, then flip all the bits and add 1. Okay, let's check our answers. First, we're going to convert 84 to a base 2 number. So you just do like this. 2 goes into 84 42 times with the remainder of 0. 2 goes into 42 21 times with the remainder of 0. 2 goes into 21 10 times with the remainder of 1. 2 goes into 10 5 times with the remainder of 0. 2 goes into 5 2 times with the remainder of 1. 2 goes into 2 one time with the remainder of 0. 2 goes into 1 zero times the remainder of 1. And we read it from the top to bottom. So the number is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. But we need 8 bits. So I've only got 7. So I put that. Now let's do negative 30. Let's try negative 30. To do negative 30... Uh, base 10, I first want to find 30. What is 30 in base 2? So 30 divided by 2 is 15 with the remainder of 0. 15 divided by 2 is 7 with the remainder of 1. 7 divided by 2 is 3 with the remainder of 1. 3 divided by 2 is 1 with the remainder of 1. 1 divided by 0 it, well, divided by 2 is 0 with the remainder of 1. So 30 is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. That's five bits were used up, so I need three zeros in front of it. So that is the eight-bit number for 30. But to make it negative 30, you flip all the bits. So all the ones become zeros, all the zeros become one. This is called knotting, a knot. You're knotting each bit in OT. Then you have to add one. Okay. 
and it ends up being that the first the when you when you do this the number when you the complement of this number will always have you starting at the right the you'll you'll keep everything the same till you get to the first one and then after that everything will change so this number is negative 30 and that is it for today